Hello, fellas. Thank you for joining me again for the fallacious truth here. This is going to be part two of this, uh, this several part series here. I'll leave a link to the first part of the story here in the description and in the video itself. So you can click on it if you need to, uh, you know, hear the first part of it. It's kind of important to hear this from the beginning and not start in the middle if you can. So what we have so far is a, is really a family man who, um, works hard for his family, takes care of his children. His wife just had an unfortunate miscarriage and what it's shaping up to be here is it sounds like she and both he are going to use the unfortunate miscarriage as an excuse for her stepping out on. She decided she wanted to get a job to, you know, quote unquote, get out of the house. She started to get in shape and um, she apparently just got a job down the street working as a bartender of all things and a waitress. And that's where we're going to pick up where we left off here. So sit back and stay tuned. I wasn't pleased when I learned who she had a relationship with. It's one thing to get the complete shafting from your wife and another one to find out she's ditching you for another guy who's really a dirtbag. I don't want to make a generality here, but there does seem to be some truth that so many women are attracted to guys like this. Well, yeah, unfortunately, it's, it's true. And it isn't until way later in life that she realized that, hey, I made a mistake here and I shouldn't have done this. And she wants to go back, fix things and make things right. And it's too late. I'm not sure if it was his looks, flashy lifestyle, or his big mouth, but apparently she was interested in him and it took off from there. You know, I was also shocked that she had been involved with him for about six months without my knowing. They've apparently been screwing in his car, the restaurant, hotels, his house, at our home when nobody was there, etc, etc. It was a real betrayal and I was deeply hurt, but I thought about what I would do and maintain my perspective and composure. What followed was several weeks of tears, sadness, and really just a whole load of crap. My family, and especially my dad, was furious and began to say terrible things about her. My wife said that the family was also upset with the situation, but didn't display the same level of animosity and bitterness that my side did. Now, that's, that's understandable. I actually had to intervene with my father and asked him to stop with the vitriolic insults against my wife. Dude, you, you gotta get this through your head. It is not worth it. You, you have no need to defend her. She was still the mother of my son's children and needed to show her respect as a grandfather. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> he doesn't. Any respect is out the window. You need to realize this. My father actually agreed and committed me on my approach to this whole situation. I told him that I didn't believe there was any benefit for me by seeking revenge on my soon-to-be ex-wife. Well, getting pissed off isn't seeking revenge. It's a very justified action, especially in this case. She was the mother of my children, and I would need to have an amicable relationship with her for the sake of our kids. Don't get me wrong. I would have loved to be an SOB and thought long and hard about it. I think that I made the correct choice in retrospect and would have done the same thing. Well, yeah, you did make the correct choice in keeping the peace. I will say that because, you know, had she had a different mindset, this could have gone a whole different way as far as preparations for the divorce and the courts are concerned. As I said, it was a rough couple weeks, but she did move out into an apartment with this guy. She did see her children and try to be active in their lives. I also felt terrible for the wife of this guy, and she was mortified by what had taken place. She did leave the restaurant to get another job and did file for divorce. I would see her at the local grocery store on occasion, and, and I always wished her well. She was originally from Pennsylvania and eventually moved back to her hometown. I understand she did get remarried to a solid man and now has a good life and children. I wish her only the best. There is no question in my mind that her splitting with this guy is the best thing that could have happened to her. The divorce itself went smoothly. She did get some money out of me due to the division of assets. I did agree to pay some alimony support for a short period of time, to which I think I ended in six months. To me, it was a cheap way of getting out of the situation. In fact, I probably would have agreed to any financial demand, dude. Don't say this. I would have agreed to any financial demand she would have made in order to be done with the situation. See, this is this goes back to what I said in one of my previous videos. You know, a lot of times men give into whatever it takes just so they can get out of the situation, and that is the wrong way to look at this. I was retained as the primary custodial parent, and she has 50-50 visitation. Well, that sounds like a positive thing, and I'm glad you were able to do this. I told her that she is always free to stop and see her children. She did do this on many occasions, and things appeared to be somewhat stable. I also think that she liked to see me when it came to visit the kids, but maybe that was wishful thinking on my part. 
dude, why is this wishful thinking on your part? You need to get her out of your head. You need to remove her. She is no longer trustworthy. You cannot trust her. You cannot even consider taking her back. Who gives a shit what she thinks or may think about you? It does not matter. My wife didn't take a lot of money, but she did make a small child support payment each month. To her credit, what? Oh man, this guy is starting to really piss me off. To her credit, she did her best and she never missed a payment when it came to her children. In retrospect, there is no doubt in my mind that my wife, stop referring to her as your wife. In retrospect, there is no doubt in my mind that my wife was going through some type of personal crisis due to the miscarriage and the aftermath of it. What are you doing? Why are you justifying her actions? Look, I'm sorry. I, I know a miscarriage can be a very hard thing, but you do not justify a personal intentional choice to completely destroy a marriage. What are you doing? I know I'm not some great prize, but there's no way my wife in her right mind would have done what she did. But I was powerless and there wasn't much I could do about it. You know, I think he's forgetting when he said that she was unhappy with the marriage prior to the miscarriage, prior to her getting pregnant, prior to this even happening. You know, from what I can see here, he's, he's, he's got, he still has several unresolved issues about this and he really could do with talking to somebody about it. Because he's contradicting himself and he's not seeing the timeline of events the way that I'm seeing it. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm looking at it as a neutral party. I'm looking at it as an outside observer. And he, he's, he's just not seeing this correctly. The day we signed the divorce papers to make it final was surreal. Things had been amicable, but it was still tough. We met at her attorney's office and it was a sad affair for me. I was saddened that she seemed so happy about the situation and she was there with her dirtbag boyfriend. She almost seemed giddy about it, which really shocked me. We had been together for so many years and had a great family together. This was the one time that I had ever felt that she disrespected me during the whole divorce. But I let it roll off because there's nothing left to prove. The marriage was over and we needed to move forward. Well, the only reason why she's giddy about it and she seems so careless about everything is because, like I said earlier, she is in the... Um, She's in the beginning stages where she found her chat and she's all happy and she has more attention, she has better validation, and he just goes out of his way to make her feel better about herself. But nine chances out of ten, this isn't <laughs> this isn't the relationship that's going to last him. She's gonna end up leaving him and probably trying to crawl back to him sometime in the future, and I damn I certainly hope he says no. When I signed the papers, I did see some regret in her eyes. Brother, no you didn't. You only saw regret that she got caught and she couldn't keep taking from both bank accounts. That's the only thing she was sad about, if she even showed regret. You know, I, I kind of have half a mind to believe that maybe that's what you thought you saw, but you didn't really see because you wanted to see it still. I do think she had a look of shock on her face when I remember what I said to her. I had thought about it and already decided what I was going to say. I must admit that I am proud of what I said and how well it came off. I'm not an actor. But on this day, I did not have the flair for the dramatic. I had written it down and practiced it until I had it down, and this is what I said. I am, of course, sad about this. I thought we had a good life and were a good team. I apologize to you if you think that I failed you because I was not able to bring you the happiness that you wanted and you thought somebody else would give you a better chance at happiness. I do think the miscarriage had a lot more to do with this than, than we realized. When tragedies take place, people get closer and stronger, or there is separation and loss. I'm sad and find that ironic that what should have been a happy experience for us is what destroyed us in the end. But that's all in the past now. I want you to have a happy life, and we can work together to give our kids the happiest, most stable life that we can. You know, the room was quiet when I said this. Her face turned stark white, and I see the regret in her eyes. With that, I got up. I shook her hand, wished her well, and said goodbye. And her attorney told me that he would send me a copy of the paper. And thank you for sticking with me through the story thus far. Um, I'm going to have the, uh, the third portion of the story out within the next probably 12 hours here. And then um, following that, probably within another 12 to 24 hours, I'm going to have an analysis of the story with, as far as his divorce goes, what should be done along a specific timeline if... Um, like I said, the wife wasn't in that infatuation stage where she's completely focused on her, 
her new Chad. Most of the time that doesn't happen and you have the ex-wife fighting for everything down to the last penny. And when that happens, most men are blindsided and they really don't know what to do. So, like I said, I'm going to go through, we're, we're, we're sort of going to change the story around him. Instead of his wife being distracted, we're going to set the stage so his wife is actually going after him for everything that she possibly can as far as children goes, finances, assets, retirement, etc., etc., etc. And we're going um, to take that, we're going to deconstruct it, and we're going to create a timeline from the original story as to what should be done, when it should be done. So if his wife actually chose to go that route, we can see what he should do and when he should do it to protect himself as much as possible. So. Please stay tuned for the uh, next part of the story, and then finally the analysis. Thank you for sticking around. Once again, please like, share, and subscribe. Take care.